We begin by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and bearing witness that none has the right to be worshipped or unconditionally obeyed except for him. And we bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his final messenger. We ask Allah to send his peace and blessings upon him, the prophets, messengers that came before him, his family and companions that served alongside him and those that follow in his blessed path until the day of judgment. And we ask Allah to make us amongst it. Allahumma ameen. The brothers and sisters, as some of you may have been following the news, the power and all communication has been cut in the Ghazla. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give victory to the people of Ghazla. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give them patience, make their seat firm. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala foil the plot of the evildoers. Allah ameen. And I want to begin, as this is heavy on our hearts in this moment, by reminding each and every single one of us that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has his ways and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has his soldiers and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make a way for them in ways that we cannot understand. And it's important for us to understand that if they could cut them off from the world, they cannot sever the connection that those people have with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If they were able to cut off their phone lines, they're not able to cut off their dua. And if they think that the people of Gaza are people who will submit themselves to this type of cruelty, then they do not know the special people that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed in that small piece of land who have big hearts and whose hearts are full of iman, whose hearts are full of faith. But I wanted to address a sentiment that many people have felt perhaps in the past few weeks, which is what is the point? What can I possibly do? The more our efforts ramp up, the more casualties we see. It feels like there's an insignificance to the things that we are trying to do for them on their behalf. And I want to speak directly to that sentiment, but first and foremost, I want you for a moment to put yourself in the shoes of a very specific person. Imagine being a doctor at a Shifa hospital right now in Ghazda. No electricity, no fuel. You have all sorts of patients with all sorts of issues. At any moment, an airstrike can come. You don't have anesthesia. You may have just found out that all of your relatives died a minute ago, but you do not have the time to mourn or grieve them. You have to get back to operating on your patients. I want you to think about what type of willpower it takes to still go there and operate on patients and try to help someone maintain their leg or their arm after it's been damaged in an airstrike or try to help someone lives through even if they don't have any limbs at all at this point or try to help a three-day-old fetus survive in that monstrosity and at the same time carry the grief of your own relatives that have already been killed as well as knowing that at any moment an airstrike can come and can wipe all of you off of the face of this earth. I want you to think about that. If there is anyone that would be asking, what's the point? It would be that doctor. But they're still going. They're operating subhanAllah with their cell phones. While we check our batteries to make sure that we can still use our phones so we can check the internet or do whatever it is that we're doing, they charge their batteries off of their cars and they come back and they use those to perform operations in the darkness of the night while bombs continue to fall on them. What's the point? And this is a sentiment that Allah and the Messenger وسلم, address so many times throughout the Quran and the Sunnah. What is the point? And I was thinking about Yusuf when he speaks to his brother at the end of the ordeal. And he says, that whoever is God conscious and patient, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not let the reward of the good doers go to waste. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself says, 
be patient because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not let the reward of the good doers go to waste. The patience of the people that are under this savagery and this brutality and that are facing what they are facing right now is to stay steadfast and know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not let a single moment of pain that they experience go without accounting on the day of judgment and go without a tremendous reward for them. The patience, the wals to build, the patience of those who are doing what they can on their behalf is to know that every single moment that you spend in their cause, Allah will not let it go to waste. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may put something in your small effort that has major impact. What's the point? We are always looking for that immediate change, that immediate visible change to happen right in front of us. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, And whoever does an atom's worth of good will see it. And whoever does an atom's worth of evil will see it. Allah ibn Abbas ta'ala he speaks about these ayats in a very profound way. He says that on the day of judgment, you won't just see the atom's worth of good that you put forward. You will see what it actually meant in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You'll see its full value. You see that hasana that you put forward, that big deed that you put forward, that seems to be so insignificant at Adam's worth in this life, on the day of judgment, you will see its full value, what it really meant. And you will see that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not omit a single part of it. And he says, even for the disbeliever, there is a pay it forward concept that even that person, Yara, they will see the goodness of their good deeds in this dunya. The believer will see Yara will see the effect, the impact of their good deeds in the hereafter. Whereas the disbeliever, because Allah Azza wa is just, will see the impact of their good deed in this life. But even then, whoever does an atom's worth of good will see it, because sometimes you need to see something to know that it's effective, to know that it means something. And Allah and Basir, who sees all, is promising you that you will see it on the day of judgment. That every single small thing put forward will mean something and you will see it in its full value. What's the point of your dua? What's the point of your efforts, whether it's in protest or in, in, in changing the narrative or trying to change the narrative or in educating even one person? What's the point of the collective will of a community? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not let it go to waste. And you need to understand that just as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised victory, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised that it will not go to waste. Just as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised reward for the good doer on the day of judgment that nothing will be omitted from the scrolls, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised that the evildoer will be brought forth and every single moment of arrogance and every single deed of evil will confront them on the day of judgment and they will be punished. And your Lord doesn't forget. If they turn out the lights, they wish to extinguish the light of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would preserve his light, even if they hate it. And there is this concept that we find present in the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that if you can't pay someone's debt off, then at least advocate on behalf of them so that maybe the debtor will release his debt, or maybe you can ease his anxiety while he is in debt. If you can't cure someone who is sick, then at least care for them while they are sick. Give them compassion and give them support and give them your presence even if you can't give them a cure to the disease that they are going from. If you can't free the captive, at least 
feed the cat to subhanAllah one of the most profound ayat where you ta'imuna ta'ama ala hubbi that the person feeds despite their love of what they have al-miskeen wal yateen wal asil these three categories of people that are given the poor person the orphan and the one who is a captive and one of the implications of that that they're going to not mention is that people used to send their prisoners out to the street, their slaves out to the street to beg for food during the day. SubhanAllah, look at the cruelty. They wouldn't feed their slaves. They'd send them out into the streets to beg during the day. And a person might think, what's the point of me feeding that person if I can't free that person? Allah SWT is saying that matters. If you can't get them out of that situation altogether, at least dignify them by giving them whatever food you have so that they can at least have that part. But don't belittle the good that you are capable of doing. Don't belittle the effort that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put in front of you. Not only is it going to be rewarded on the day of judgment, but if you persist with it, it will be effective in this dunya. I want you to understand something and I want us to feel it with a great sense of confidence, even though there's a great sense of pain right now for our brothers and sisters in Gaza. This enemy is losing. This enemy is a coward. The narrative is changing. The ummah is rising. And they know, they know that our hearts are going to remain connected to that place. And as long as we continue to insist that we are not going away, they can use their bombs. But just like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has invisible soldiers, invisible angels, invisible ways in which He works, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has brought out of this ummah a very visible solidarity with Palestine that's been missing for a very long time. They're losing. And we have to keep that in mind. And we are able to process this on an individual level and on a community level. When the Imam bin Taymiyyah rahimahullah ta'ala says, what can my enemies do to me if they kill me, it is shahada, if they imprison me, it is a chance to be secluded with my Lord, if they expel me that it is a chance to, to contemplate on the size of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is shahada or qalwa or, or siyaha to dabbur. When Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah says that on an individual level, we say that as a community level right now. And you can see it in the people of Gaza. They're saying it. They're saying it. SubhanAllah. I want you to ask yourself. That man, Wa'id, the journalists that you all saw, our dear brother Wa'ad, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for him and have mercy on his family. What human being can pick himself up on the same day that he buries his wife and children and still report on the crimes towards the people of us? Where does that come from? But he knows that every minute away from that camera exposing the crimes against the people is a moment of joy for that enemy. And he doesn't want to give it. He feels the responsibility of being there. I take us back to that and we ask ourselves, if we were nurses and doctors right now in a shifa, and we were running around those hospitals trying to cure the patients, and we were digging in the rubble to try to find a child knowing that there are maybe 300, 400 children in this pile, but I can get one. Be patient. Allah does not let the reward of the good doers go to waste. The brothers and sisters, this is a time that our faith requires something stronger from us. This is a time that we do not cower. This is a time where you are going to be intimidated, where you feel the full thrust of the political establishment and the media establishment against you. Be patient. 
Allah will not let the reward of the good doers go to waste. This is not the time for us to lay down and say it's over. We prepare ourselves for moments like this in history. And for every period in history, there are people that rise to the occasion. And that's not always someone with a large platform. That's someone with a persistent heart. SubhanAllah, the efforts of people over years and years and years and years, because they know that they are not investing into a waste basket. They know that they are investing in their book of deeds with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that they will see each and every single one of them on the day of judgment. We're a people who when we make dua, no matter how small we feel, you know, I, I'll tell you something that I was thinking about, and it is a trick of shaytan. As I raised my hands to make dua one of these nights, I thought to myself, what is my dua to one of those people in us? How small am I that my Allahumma in the comfort of my home is even in the same league as that woman in Razari. And I realize that's a trick of shaykh. Because he does not want us to make dua. Dear brothers and sisters, it might be your dua, it might be your tear, it might be your message of awareness. Right now what we are all doing is we're putting forth sparks, trying to spark the fire of change. And we believe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not just in charge of it all, but he is musambi with asbab. He is the one who causes means to come into play. He is the one who makes means effective and he is the one who determines outcomes. Be patient. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not let your efforts go to waste. I want to end with a story just from right here in Arizona. There is a prisoner that you have in this state of yours. I don't know if he's been transferred to another high security prison or not, Imam Jamidi Amit. And there was a protest two years ago in front of the maximum security prison that Imam Jamil is being held in. And the sudden attention that was directed to him at least led to enough pressure that was created that a surgery, a cataract surgery was done to where his vision was at least distorted. You know what? If he's not free from prison, and I hope that he will be freed one day and that Allah Azza will use us for him and for all of the innocent people. At least he can see now. Now, inshallah ta'ala, we need to make sure that he sees the skies again and that he sees his family again. But at least he can see. If you can't free the captive, feed the captives. If you can't cure the person, care for the person. If you can't change their circumstance, walk with them in their circumstance. If you can't pay their debt, advocate on their behalf to the debt. But be patient, dear brothers and sisters. Every single good effort that we have ahead of us is important right now. Do not let the shaitan come in between you and those atmad and those good deeds because just like he tries to disconnect you on an individual level from doing the things that will bring about your benefit in the hereafter, he tries to disconnect you from the things that are important on a community level that bring about glory and victory to the sun. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give victory and glory to our brothers and sisters in the Hasindi. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala foil the plot of their enemy. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala feed them where they have been starved. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comfort them where they have been hurt. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make their feet firm. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow them to find nothing but his rahmah, nothing but his mercy in the places where cruelty has been shown to them. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put in their hearts certainty and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant them martyrdom, grant them shahada when they are killed and grant them healing when they live and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala write down for them the full reward and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us from a distance to be 
in their service right now. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us to the ways in which we can be helping them most effectively. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept their du'as and accept our du'as. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala unite their ranks and unite our ranks. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bring about us at a community level, at an individual level, that which brings about his blessing and his favor. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala purify us and purify them from the things that bring about hardship upon this earth. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow our brothers and sisters in Palestine to see full freedom. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the face of an enemy that wishes us nothing but death, give us nothing but life as an ummah. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give victory and life to this ummah. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give liberation to the aqsa and to allow us to pray in a free masjid al aqsa And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to destroy every tyrant. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala foil their plans. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make their means of power futile. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Render them the weak ones. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give victory to the oppressed over their oppressors in Palestine and all over the world. Allahumma ameen. Aqul al lihada bistafu wa inu lakum rasa'ad misu min kastafiru inna wa ghafu bukhin. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, when I want to email Allah to me, when I am people to the Mutapim, Allah must have been a lot of Kanab because he came from the Sala Mahari, a Sala Mana Arihi, or Safi, or Seven to Summit Kafira. Allah love free Mokmini or in our Twilim Sene or in Sumat, every shed in our Mount in the Samir or Karibu, Waji with the Wat. Allah must through Lana or Hamna, Wat for Anna, Wala to Azimna, Obana, Walana, and Fusana, or Ingham Tafu Lana or Talkamna. Lana Kuna Mena Farsin, Ilahan in the Karafu and Kirin into Tripilafu Fafu Anna. Allah must be wide in it, or become my camera or the Siva, or Bena Havilana, as wise in our Riatina, or what I know with Wajana, the Mutapina, Imana, Allah, and Sir Fani Mustada, Fina Fifilistin, Allah, and Sir Fani Mustada, Fina Fifilistin, Allah, whom I could name our women when I see it, Allah, whom I could name our women when I see it, Allah, whom I did to be I do we to I do we him, Allah, whom I did to be I do we to I do we him, Allah, my inner Naja Arikasina Furin. When I rose of becoming Shuburi him, Allah, my Arika with Wadi, 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 of the Wadi, and what's for Jarrah, Father, and Bang, and Sad Me, about a lot of lie, a little bit I do what I sound like. In time, the Purba, we are not in the fact that you are Munkari, what Bavi, you're looking now to come to the Kurum, first of all, and his Purukum was too hard, and you're not easy to look. What a victory, Lanji Akub, Allah, he got on my first sound, and what came to see.